Hey what's up YouTube, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, overview and review of the Microsoft Surface Headphones 2. First, let's get into the unboxing. Alright, so let's remove that big outer packaging. Here's some knife cutting action for you guys. The Microsoft Surface Headphones 2 come in a pretty big but thin box. You'll see why in a moment. Let's cut that plastic and remove that lid. And wow, that is a very big case for a pair of headphones. Let's get that case out and move that aside. Below we have some paperwork, a quick start guide and a warranty information. Putting that aside, there is nothing else in the box. Bringing back the case, the headphones are inside along with some cables. A USB-C to USB-A charging cable, a 3.5mm jack to 3.5mm jack cable. Here are all the parts laid out together. Okay, now onto the overview. Okay, so the Surface Headphones 2 came out on May 6, 2020. They came a bit later to Singapore, I'm not really sure the exact date, but they did come later. Um, I bought them recently for 302 Singapore dollars or 225 US dollars. The usual price of these headphones are 378 SGD or 282 USD. If you were to buy them in the US, they would be 250 USD or 335 SGD. So I pretty much got them at a pretty decent steal. They weigh a total of 290 grams. They come in light grey or matte black which is what I got and they have a 40mm driver which is a pretty nice large driver. They supposedly charge in less than 2 hours which is neat and they advertise up to 18.5 hours of listening time for music. There is a USB-C connector for charging as well as a 3.5mm headphone port to connect a 3.5mm jack cable into your headphones and into a separate device. All of these are on the right side of the headphones. There is a power button and interestingly a mute button on the right side at the bottom of the headphones. Volume control is also controlled using the right dial and active noise cancelling or ANC is controlled using the left dial. Speaking of ANC, these headphones supposedly have 13 levels of noise cancelling. Personally, I don't think I need that many levels of ANC but it is a nice versatility to have. You can single tap on either side to play or pause or double tap to go to the next track and triple tap to go to the previous track. The headphones connect wirelessly through Bluetooth and they come with Cortana which is a cool thing to have if you like Halo like me, even though I don't really personally use Cortana. They also have dual microphones for voice. 
Alright, so how are these headphones? Well, I've been using them for about two weeks plus now. So let's firstly talk about battery life. Battery life has been generally great. I only had to charge it twice. I did not keep track of how many hours I was using these headphones for, but I could use them for multiple hours on an end and for five to six days at a time. So I only charge them about once a week. A cool thing about them is that every time you turn on your headphones, Cortana will tell you roughly how much battery life you have left in your headphones in terms of hours. So it means that when I turn them on, Cortana could tell me 9 hours remaining, which is pretty cool. Overall, the battery life is pretty good and I have no complaints there. So how about comfort? Well, the headband on top is a soft touch rubbery texture. It is soft enough such that there is not really any pressure on the top of my head, which is nice. The ear pads are really really soft and kind of almost like memory foam. They cover the whole ear well, then again I have pretty small ears, but they isolate noise from the outside really well. However, there is one thing about them if you do wear spectacles like me. Some spectacles such as mine may actually interfere with the whole seal of the earmuffs and your skin, which means that there may be a small gap between the earmuffs and your skin if you wear spectacles. This leads to an incomplete seal which can cause bleed in both sound from the outside and inside and cause ANC to not work as well as it should. More on that in a moment. Overall, I could wear them for many hours at a time until they got too warm because Singapore is a very warm country. Okay, so in connectivity, I do have some bad things to say about the Surface headphones too. At the start, when I was trying to connect the headphones too to my Note 20 Ultra, I had some issues. The headphones were basically having problems connecting to my Note 20 Ultra. I googled it and it was apparently because my phone name was too long for some reason. So I changed the name of my phone to a shorter name and it did work. Uh, the headphones were eventually able to connect. The headphones do support multiple device connectivity so I connected my headphones to my desktop and Mac as well. Switching between devices was unfortunately not very seamless. So let's say my headphones are connected to both my phone and my desktop. Let's say the headphones were initially connected to my phone as well. So I was playing music, you know, I was playing some YouTube on my phone and then I switch over to using my desktop and I put my phone down. Unfortunately, the headphones don't really always auto connect to my desktop and they still stay connected to my phone, which means that when I do watch YouTube or play music or play games on my PC, uh, no audio is coming through to my Surface headphones too and because it's still connected to my phone. This is vice versa for whichever device I'm using. Uh, the headphones don't switch between each device very instantaneously, which can be quite annoying. My work around some of these things which work sometimes was to turn off Bluetooth on the device which I did not want to use the headphones on anymore, or the long way which I had to do sometimes was to completely disconnect the headphones from let's say my desktop, for example, if I wanted to use it on my desktop, so I had to reconnect it to my desktop to use it, which is quite annoying. So now, what is arguably the most important thing in a headphone? Sound. So how is the sound? Well, first I want to say that I am not an audiophile, but I do know my audio to some extent. I have to say that I really liked the sound. It was overall really good. Both the mids and the lows, like bass, are really detailed, but the highs could be better in my opinion. The highs sounded a little teeny when I first started playing a variety of songs to test them. So I downloaded the Surface Audio app which had a ton of features. Uh, I changed the equalizer from flat to classical which actually solved the lows, the low highs for me. It sounded pretty much just like how I wanted it to sound like after I changed it in the equalizer. This is probably personal preference though because I primarily listen to movie and game OSTs as well as some pop and indie rock. They are plenty loud and I never have to go past 75% on these headphones. They are far louder than my Bose QC25s ever were. My theory is because they are powered by an internal battery while my QC25s had to be powered by a 3.5mm cord. This was because the AAA battery inside was only used for ANC. However, I have to admit that the QC25s still sounded better than the Surface headphones too in my opinion. But that only makes sense when you look at the price. 
Here are some sample audio between the Surface Headphones 2 sound, the Bose QC25 sound, and my external speakers sound. Next, Active Noise Cancellation or ANC. What about those 13 levels of ANC? Well, it actually turned out more useful than I thought. Basically, instead of having the need to take the headphones off when someone wanted to talk to me, I simply had to turn down the ANC rather than take my headphones off entirely. But how is the ANC all together? Well, they are pretty good. They block out most of the unwanted sounds that you don't want to hear like fan noise, aircon noise, even some train noise which is exactly what you want when you are travelling. I haven't had a chance to test them on a plane well because of uh, obvious reasons like COVID-19 but I can say that the ANC isn't as good as my Bose QC25s. I do feel like the Bose ANC are more isolating than the Surface headphones too but then again because of, well, price. Lastly, I do want to mention something about the case and overall portability. The case is pretty large for a pair of headphones, but that's mostly because the Surface Headphones 2 don't fold up like my Bose headphones. But it does have a tapered shape which goes from thin to thick. This does allow for relatively easy transportation as they do fit in my bag pretty nice when it's empty. So let's conclude. What is my personal verdict? These headphones are definitely worth it for someone who wants an all-rounder and a little more in terms of features. They really nail the basics for the most part. Great sound, great ANC, great connectivity when it works, and most importantly for me, the price. These headphones are in a way an unbeatable value. Even at the undiscounted price of 378 SGD, they are pretty much worth it compared to the Sony WH-1000XM4s which retail for about 549 SGD or the Bose 700 headphones which will cost you around 600 SGD. Sure, if you do want better sound quality and ANC, then you are better off getting the Bose or the Sonys. But that is also on top of you willing to shell out the extra cash. If you aren't, then I can say that you will most likely not be disappointed by the Microsoft Surface headphones too. As usual, if you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, do give it a thumbs down. And let me know down in the comment section what I can do to improve my videos and what you like to see in the future as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.